We were on an Entrepreneur Enthusiast podcast, and one of those acronyms was E for Entrepreneur. Absolutely. And the reason why I got you on my pod today, not just because I'm in, in uh, your, you play, it's your city? I'm in your city? Oh, man. It's home? I, 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 this is home. This is home. It's not my city, though. Okay, okay. I, I love the people here. I love it here. It's not my city. I okay. Can't, well, can't I, we, well we, in, we in the A. For sure. You know, your backyard. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Um, and I, I would say we met about six years ago, seven years ago. And I, and I always constantly tell this story. It's a big story in uh, my book. But I was, I was, I was, you want to tell the story? From your. I mean, listen, I, I'll say what I, what, from my token, from, yeah. from my standpoint, man, I met, I met Joe back before, you know, anything really went to the level of where it's at today. And yeah. he, he was our Uber driver. This yeah. is probably like the third or fourth time I've been in Los Angeles, and we were headed to a black show. One of the shows that really changed the dynamic of what was about to happen for the trajectory of you know careers from there, because that was the Roxy show yeah. for Black, where The Weeknd came out. Yeah. And Joe didn't even know who Black was, but nah, after that he was just like, "Yo, this is yo," you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and. Uh, you know, he, he's always been a, a major supporter of mine. Every time I came to the city, he showed love. He had the yep. clubs on lock. He had just, uh, he knew all the good food spots. Anytime I had a question, yo, Joe, I need this. Boom. It was, it was right there. Very resourceful. Very, yep. you know, entrepreneur minded. Very much a go get it. So I always appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was a time in my life um, as an entrepreneur where I, I would say, I was about like 27 years old, but. I had invested so much in my company and a lot of people being here, but I had like invested in like a space and staff and all that. I just mismanaged all of that. Um, and a lot of a lot of my partial mishaps because of me, but it put me in that Uber car and I, I drove Uber for a year and a half. Like, and I used to go around and meet so many incredible people driving Uber. Like I got like over 1500 five star trips. Like my rating was like a 4.8, you know, for the people that didn't give me a high rating, like, it's cool, but like, <laughs> my rating was like a 4.8, and like, it was interesting because I think um, a lot of people looked at me as an Uber driver at the time, uh, you didn't, um, because, you know, I, I was just, look, we, we both men, you know, trying to connect, and uh, one thing that inspired me about you is you were on your entrepreneur journey and I think you were you just on your sobriety journey there or you weren't there yet I was not there yet you were not there I, yet I wasn't yeah, even yeah, there yeah. yet yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. So, I definitely got wasted that night yeah we did no we went we went out we went to we went to playhouse that night we turned up like got lit like yeah and, and yeah. so seeing that and it's like the growth, but you still kept the same trajectory. And then parallel to you seeing you change and, and and talk a little bit about that, you know, the mindset you were in then to getting into the mindset of the, the place of sobriety. Let's, let's hone in on that. Cause a lot of these things are things that I looked at and said, is this young, this dude is doing this, you know, why can't me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Dang, that's, that really threw me right quick because that time period, paces didn't even exist. Then. It didn't exist. It didn't exist. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah, it didn't exist. So when it relates to, you know, that that path, it was more mm -hmm. so. Man, everything happens so quick. Yeah. As it relates to just everything being at your fingertips, you want women, you want liquor, you want drugs, you want yeah. whatever you want was plentiful. Yeah, you know, and it was at your fingertips. Whatever you wanted, whatever speed you wanted, and you know, back then, if you were twenty seven, I had to have been twenty four. You know what I'm saying? Twenty five. Yeah. Around around that time, because this was pre. Because twenty five was when I said, "Nah, things have to change." Yeah. And I had came to a point where I just knew it was time. I had hit my own personal rock bottom. Yeah. When people talk about rock bottom. You know, it could be a traumatic experience that occurred. For me, it wasn't even necessarily a traumatic experience. I was just tired. Yeah. You know, I was depressed. Yeah. Right. And even when I think about the word depressed, it's just like deep rest. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have to retire that facade. You have to retire that face that you're putting onto the world. And that was when I really had to go internal to figure out, you know, who really is Evan. Yeah. Like, what, 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 what triggered that? Because a lot of people 
say that that, you know, depression, mental health, and, you know, and I'm saying this from a standpoint of being able to validate this, that you can't do it on your own. Like, you can't get in that space. And I'm not saying you can't. I'm, you know, sometimes you need help, need aid. But to dig in yourself, how, how, how what made you even have that strength mm. to dig in yourself to even pull from there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I had periodic episodes of just, like, manic, where yeah. it was one of those things where it's just like, I know I have a problem and I don't know how to ask for help. Mm. And not knowing how to ask for help, as men, we're not even taught to know how to ask for help. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The ego is just like, I, I figured out. Yeah. I'm broke. I don't have a dollar, but I'm yeah. going to figure it out. Right? And, and especially in as black men. Yeah, we don't like to be wrong. Right? Ball, man. Yeah, it's tough because <laughs> people will use that against us. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody yeah. will use it against you. Your friends, your family. You know what I'm saying? It, it, yeah. just, it just happens. So th there's a natural you know, wall that's up, like, I can't let nobody see me this way. Yeah, yeah. And I had to really um, get vulnerable with myself, and yeah. I'll, I'll never forget this. Uh, a, a really good friend of mine, Sean, he came to my house, and he saw me literally about to, you know, cut myself. Yeah. Um, which I which I did at times, yeah, so just yeah. to, you know, feel alive, feel right? To feel something. Um, it was scary stuff, and he was really the one to be like, man, you're, you're not okay. Yeah. You know, you're not okay, and, and you need help. and it took a friend like that who's really close to me to be able to like yo wake up you know people care about you yo mm -hmm. like i'm gonna help you and and he yeah. did he did he he actually put me together with uh my sponsor and, and you listened and i listened i listened like in, in life there'll be people that you know that you can take the advice from because they really mean well they're not trying to gain nothing from you they really care about you know you and, and your survival. Bro, bro, so many people get offended when somebody gives them advice to help them. And I don't understand where that comes from. But to take that on is like, why Why are you getting offended? I'm just trying to help you. I'm not trying to harm you in any way, disrespect you, nothing. Like, I'm, try, I'm trying to make sure you don't go where I fell. Mm -hmm. And for you to, at a, at, in your 20s, and to be a black man, you know, I'm sure you're stubborn at times, to be able to accept that and move forward. Um, I mean, what, because you know, I'm going to get on the entrepreneur side, but what, can you speak to some advice that you would give to somebody to be able to dig to that place and then pull out? Because a lot of this, to me, it takes a backbone to be a business owner. Mm -hmm. It takes a backbone to get out there and support yourself. And you have to have a certain level of tenacity to, that with you and, and grit. And it, that grit is in you that you were able to pull out to even get to that point. So what are some key things that you can take from looking yourself in the mirror and getting to that point? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a great question. I'll give three. Mm -hmm. So as it relates to really sitting with yourself, you have to be able to accept your failures. Mm -hmm. And in those failures, you have to accept responsibility. Mm -hmm. So accepting that you experienced a failure and accepting the responsibility, no matter if it was in your head, you, it's someone else's fault. It's yeah. your fault. Everything that happens to you is your fault. Yeah. Right? Like I was just in an in really. accident on Sunday. It's my fault. Yeah. It's my fault. It's nobody else's fault. Yeah. I was on the road driving a motorcycle. I didn't have no gear on. Yeah. I didn't have no helmet. I had no pants. I had no boots. I had no jacket. And here I am. Hurt. Yeah, hurt. It's my fault. Your fault. It's my fault. I can't blame. I can't sit, sulk. So, oh, is the road supposed to? No, 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 no. Accept failure. Yeah. Accept responsibility. That's one. Two, you have to identify your inner circle. Mm. And what I mean by identifying the inner circle is they, they call, they say it's the five closest people to you or the people that you spend the most time yep. with. Whatever way you want to identify, you must identify it to realize the influences those people have on you. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. very big because yeah. if you look at those five people or yeah. however many are in that inner yeah. circle and 80% of them are negative, yeah. how do you think your output is going to be? Exactly. Just period. Right? Yeah, exactly. So um, that's the second one. The third one is you have to want change. Yeah. If you don't want change, change will not occur. Yeah. So many times, like me personally in my own experience going through sobriety, I meet other people that are just like, oh, that's so admirable. I want to do that too. No, they don't. They don't. 
is no, they don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you you have to want change, and you can't expect it if you really don't want it. That's yeah. what anything else. I got, I got a friend named and Cameron. He always reminds me if like if we say something is hard, he'll say okay. He'll put it on the board and be like, okay, that's hard. Now what else? And it's like if once you accept it. Then and you know it's there. That obstacle is there. Then you have to look at yourself and say, "Do I want to deal with this or not deal with this?" Um, so to, to translate into the the entrepreneur side of things, how did that affect you in the work side of things, uh, and how were you able to navigate at that time through that? Man, it was gruesome. Yeah, it was gruesome. Did you, did you always did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I was, I was a kid doing garage sales and yeah. coloring with the crayons, saying, yeah. you know, everything's for sale at you know six years old. Yeah. So I always had an entrepreneur mentality, um, just off GP, mm -hmm. just seeing how unhappy my parents were at their you know their jobs. Man. So talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I always knew that. Okay, if the salary cap is this, well, how am I gonna get? to the M's if yeah. the cap is this. It's gonna take me 20 years to get here? Ah, that's crazy, yeah. you can't do that, right? So, um, as it relates to personally just going on that journey to it, I couldn't go outside for a long time. Yeah. I couldn't go outside. I never really realized how entrenched my life was in alcoholism. Mm. Like, I literally was planning my activities around the day around when I was gonna get, get alcohol. Drink. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm not going to that event. There ain't no open bar. Yeah. Oh, uh, nah, they don't. I don't know about this one because there's gonna be kids there. There's no, yeah. like, I would literally be like, nope, 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 yep, 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 okay. And yeah. move like that. So I had to pre program. I had to really sit with myself and figure out, yo, what are these things that are important to me? Yeah. And, Believe me, like even in that time, I was managing. You know what I'm saying. I had clients and stuff like that. It was really tough because yeah. there's days where I literally would just shut down to the world, and sometimes that still happens. Yeah, I still need to take that time because it doesn't just go away. Addictions don't just go away. They still exist. They're yeah. just dormant. Dormant. You know. So there's still inner work that needs to continue to be done five years later. In in, in, in that space of accountability, and let's let's hone in on that one first because. If you, there, there's that pillar of accountability that you have there, and you're still able to maintain your work-life balance. Um, when, after you actually, you know, sobered up, you're good. When did you see the the change in the work side of things, and, and what what was that change? What was that noticeable mm, change? Man, my calmness mm -hmm. in dealing with life problems became a superpower. Yeah. Whereas prior, I would lose it. I would be frantic. I would be running around like a chicken with the head cut off. Y'all yeah. know that, um, you know that that situation. Any situation that started just occurring, I would look at it from calm. I would literally chant the serenity prayer. Yeah. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change courage to change the things that I can and wisdom mm -hmm. to know the difference. Mm -hmm. Any moment that I need to use that, I mm -hmm. sit with that and I'm able to make a better, make wiser a better decision. decision. It's simple as that from, yeah. from that standpoint of what it did. Because if anybody knew me prior to that, I was a hothead. I was ready to fight. I was ready to turn up. I yeah. was ready to... I was on go. I'm from New York. It just, yeah. it's just the mentality, yeah. right? Shout so, out to my boys from New York. right? It's, it's, just, it's just in us. We grew up around it. It's the concrete yeah. jungle. So yeah. naturally, we're on offense. Yeah. What this process did is it didn't make me just go on defense. It made me play the middle. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I need to bring to this situation in order to defuse? Yeah. Or to make a move. So. Per perspective is everything. In those cases, just understanding, sitting back and um, being patient. I say that's what the Uber car, the car taught me, to just sit back and listen to people um, and then get over it. Because I wasn't going to see you again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it was the first time I'm in business where it's like, oh, you getting out and I don't want to see you again? All right, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, and, it's, and, and letting letting the personal go because it's not going to come back. Um, with Within that, in your transition as an entrepreneur, um, you then came in, you wrote all this packed up for you now to then write the book and put the book out. Mm -hmm. And the director for the book 
Who was the book for? Mm. Originally, the book was for me. Mm. The book was written for me. At times when I was writing, I wouldn't be living what I was writing. Yeah. I couldn't write no more. Yeah. I was faking it. Yeah. So, uh, there was months at a time where I could not write because I was not living my own principles. Got it. Yep. Period. Like I'm, I'm over here talking about health as well, and how I need to be drinking more water, and, and I need to be eating more you're greens. Not, you're not done. And I'm over here eating fast food. Yeah. Or you know, just input anything. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about journaling. Yeah. I'm talking about reading, and I'm doing none of those none things. None of those things. It comes a time when all that when that catches up and you either fold or um, or hold, um, and you were able to get in that that position to do that. So you put out the book, and, and to the book being for yourself, like what is that ideal makeup of the the younger version of you, and like who is the young Evan right now? You know what are they doing? You know who are, they, who are you trying to tackle that? Mm. Man, just. First off, I put the book out independently with no yeah. like major publisher or yeah, anything like that. that. And I sold over 500 copies in yeah. the first year, just personally, like just from word of mouth or, yeah. you know, people that I have never met a day in my life purchasing a book telling me how much it's helped them grow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not necessarily for me anymore at all, because I, I, I clearly I've done inner work yeah. to where I could get to that point now, yeah. but I could speak on it. Yep. So when people give feedback, whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't fully like I love all of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm still growing as a person. So the next book is going to be, oh, OK, I'll take that into consideration. Oh, I need to expound on that. Mm -hmm. oh, I need to back this up with more factuals and research. Oh, OK, I got you. you. You seem like you are have a certain level of perfection like me. How was it being able to say, all right, it's fine. Mark. It took a while. It took a while because one I'm one of those people where if I have a really big idea that's close to me, I'm not sharing it with yeah. people until I feel that it's final. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because I don't want any intrusion. I don't want any, want any outside influences to deter me from moving in the path that I know that I need to be going. So yeah. that was tough in itself. Even though the book is, you know, less than 150 pages long, it still took me three years. Yeah. Just out of... Okay, I'm, I'm living it, I'm writing it, I got writer's block, I'm, I'm good now, this is it, all right. I, the pandemic was really what pushed me to put it out. Put it out, yeah. That's what pushed me because it's like, oh, now's the time. Yeah. Now I can sit and edit it. Now I can get out of my head. Now mm -hmm. the world needs this. Needs this. So in 2020 is when I actually put it out. I, I think when I saw that, that's what motivated me because my, my book had been finished. Um, and my book is on productivity and how I, I use just certain tactics to be focused, remain focused, and complete tasks. Um, I got this ADD mind I'm all over the place, but a lot of people think the idea of being an entrepreneur is like I'm making a million, billion dollars. Like you said, chasing the M's. And I remember sitting down and hearing the speech, you know, you can go get a job, you know, get paid 100000 a year, you get an education, you know, you, you're going to make this much, it's guaranteed. Or, you can go this route and there's a point point one percent chance you're gonna be a millionaire. Mm. That millionaire is point point one percent chance enticed me, you know, and, it, and and that's why I chose the entrepreneur route. But, you know, through that I didn't realize how much focus, how much uh, how, how much I had to be uh, persistent, um, how much I had to be not just accountable, but like you said, wanted and how much I wanted those things. So I read, wrote my book around how was I able to control my mind and get things done at the end of the day. Um, I, I feel like a lot of us have a hard time with getting things done on mm -hmm. a regular basis mm -hmm. and putting tasks and prioritizing tasks. And sometimes it, you could black this one out because these things need to get done no matter what. And everyone has their different methods. So when you Publish your book and inspire me because I'm like, damn, my shit's been done. Mm. I'm just in my head. I can't. And I'm holding this just for me. Mm. Like I'm mm. using this. Um, so, so you know, circling back to the entrepreneur enthusiast, um, what, what advice would you have for me now in on the journey of going out and then publishing my book and putting it out to the masses? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first you got to address your own fears mm -hmm. of putting it out. Address your fears. Address your fear. Yeah. Right? Because 
what are you scared of? Mm. Are you scared of somebody saying it was whack or it didn't it didn't hit? Mm -hmm. Because at that point it's like what are they gonna the same the same thing with the Uber driver? You're never gonna see them again. Never gonna see them again. Oh, some people you may see them again. However, yeah. you know those will nine times out of ten be the supporters or the I, undercover I think, agents. I think in my whole time here, I mean, saw one person twice, mm. and that's because they lived around me, and I started when I where I lived. But yeah, I ain't never gonna see you again. You're not gonna you're not gonna see them again, or or the impact is so small. Yeah. Right. So address address your fear of why you don't want to put it out. Yeah. Second, make sure you get a great copy editor mm. to make sure that the text reads, you know, how you want it to flow. Yeah. Because there's nothing more embarrassing than a bunch of typos and stuff like that. That's embarrassing. Um, as, as just as it relates, because there'll be you know a scholar reading it yeah. one day and be like, oh, this is. Do, do you do you find out that there's like always typos though? Someone's always like, oh, this is wrong. This is. There's always typos. Yeah. It's always typos. However, it still don't let that get in your head. That's why yeah. I said hire the copy editor. There's only so many times you're gonna read it because you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss you, it. You, 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 once you feel it's final, you have to give it up to a copy editor and yeah. let somebody else go over it. Shout out to Brittany. Um, Brittany looked over my whole entire book and was just like, "Look, this is every. These are all the red lines." And I was like, "Wow, I didn't catch any of this." Yeah. But you know, she she was a teacher. She teacher. she knows. She got it. She she knows, yeah. right? So there's individuals that shoot, just blast it out to your network. Who's a copy editor right now? Put it in the comments. Like shoot yeah. me a DM. Like I need I need a copy editor who wanna read my book first. You feel me? Who want the opportunity, right? Yeah. So um that's second. Third, I'll say don't get too hung up on the versions as far as the hard cover, as far as the mm -hmm. design. Yeah. I spent six months just making sure that the cover and the sample was right and right. all of that. Yeah. And I lost six months of time. I put the book out in September 2020. Mm -hmm. I had the first sample in March of 2020. Yeah. And I still neglected to like select the final version until June or whatever the case may be. So yeah. shout out to Bernard. Shout out to Bernard and, and Team Bowie. Like they walk me through my entire process and, and, and bringing it from seed to fruition. Yeah. Actually, when I first got the first copy in March, it was like, it was still surreal to me. It was yeah. like, man, I'm really an author? Like, is this a real thing with my with my own ISBN number? Yeah. Shout out to Amalika, my cousin who got that for me. Like, it was a real tangible real thing. thing in yeah. my hand. It was like, yeah. so the same feeling that you probably feel like, oh, no, nah, this for me. That's how yeah. I felt. I was like, dang, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, in order for us to grow, in order for us to serve, in order for us to impact, we need to give ourselves. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I want you to speak to that because uh, a very common thing around me is people don't like to, people like to hold on to their work and do every phase. And I'm a big outsourcer now. I think that that's helped me grow tremendously as an entrepreneur, being able to hire people and giving people the confidence that, that I know they're going to do their job. Um, how, how was that relinquishing the the work, and I know in your in your field, you kind of have to do that, really. So it translated. So how was that feeling to be able to say, you know what, I've taken this as far as I can take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys take it where it needs to go. Man, in, in in every central entity I'm part of, yeah, I'm delegating or empowering someone else to do what they're good at. So mm -hmm. I didn't come up with the concept of the cover of my book. That's space. Yeah. Yeah. Space, I said, listen, this is what I think, yeah. go play. He come back with the cover, it was amazing, I loved it. Yeah. You know, the, the, the logo, I told John, shout out to John, for, for the Pacers logo, I told him, like, yo, I just want stairs. I just yeah. want something simple with stairs. And he came up with it, it was like, you know, like let these people who are experts in their realm do what they need do to do. <laughs>